In this video, we will learn one way to formulate planes in geometric algebra, and we'll consider two cases. In the first case, the plane that we wish to formulate must pass through a given point and be parallel to a given bivector. And I'll mention right now that we'll be using a fairly standard notation where we use the same letter, in this case p, to indicate both the vector and its endpoint. So that's our first case. The second case is when we want the plane to be parallel to a given bivector, but below or above or to the side at some distance from that point. So those are our two cases. So how might we do this? Well, we'll use two ideas. The first idea is that for any given vector, in this case u, what we call the vector that we call the rejection of u with respect to the bivector is calculated in this way. And you can find this in standard sources like Hestinez or McDonald's book. The second idea that we'll use is that for any vector that is parallel to the bivector, in this case w, the outer product of that vector with the bivector is zero. So how will we use these ideas? Well, in our first case, Again, the point P is in the plane, and therefore any other, or the vector from P to any other point within that plane will be parallel to the bivector, and therefore the vector X minus P is parallel to the bivector, and therefore the outer product is zero. In the next case, the point, or the plane is in this case below the point, so we will use the idea again of the rejection. And here V is the rejection of P with respect to the bivector. So what we're going to do then is use the point itself and its rejection to find some point here that lies within the plane that interests us. And knowing some point within the plane, we can use the former or the previous ways of formulating a plane that we saw a moment ago. So what we'll do then is this. You'll notice that if we go back a step here, the rejection of P with respect to the bivector is in the direction contrary to the direction from P itself to the plane. So that's why we have the minus sign here. And all we've done then is, is identify some point here within the plane that we wish to specify as being the sum of P itself and whatever distance, scalar distance here, times um, the, unit, the unit, of, unit vector of its rejection, pardon my fumbling there. So now we have a vector P minus dV to, the, to a point within the plane, and now we'll just use our previous solution. So for any point within the plane here, the vector x minus p minus dv is parallel to the bivector. And therefore, as we see here, x minus p minus dv wedged with b gives 0. Now we can go a little further there and obtain something that might also be useful. The idea here is that x minus p minus dv wedged with b again is 0, and we can rearrange that to get x minus p wedged with b is the distance, the scalar distance here, times v hat wedged with b. Now, because v is perpendicular to b, v hat wedged with b will be some scalar multiple of the unit trivector, and the unit trivector for any well, for any orthonormal system that we set up here, orthonormal basis, I should say, is just the product of the, th of the three orthonormal basis vectors. So here we just have some scalar multiple of um, I3. So this scalar times all that is just some, some other scalar multiple of I3, and we can calculate that scalar multiple from the givens. So I hope this video has been useful. I look forward to your comments, and I hope that you'll look for the link in the video description for the LinkedIn group Pre-University Geometric Algebra, and I hope that you'll consider joining. Thank you for your time.